So, I want to start with this question. I'm going to talk about a message called Give What You Have. Just give what you have. Okay? This message about sharing your faith. Message about sharing your faith. And I'm going to ask you guys, on a scale of 1 to 10, okay, 10 being your greatest joy and delight, and 1 being something that absolutely terrifies you, where would, it st where would you stand on that scale when it comes to sharing your faith with other people? You know, are you like a 2? Or are you like a 9? You know, where are you guys? Because you know what? I know that sharing your faith is something that really scares a lot of Christians. Like, we're afraid to talk about God for whatever reason. It, it's very scary for us. It's awkward for us. It's uncomfortable for us to, to talk about Jesus with, with other people. And I, and I understand that. You know, I, it's not the, the most natural thing to do. I, I, I get that. I understand that. But here's the thing. And here's why I'm so excited to, to share this word. Sharing your faith is actually a lot easier than you think. And it can be something that not only are you not afraid to do, but something that you will just love to do. Something you will look forward to doing every day. Now, I'm not trying to set you up for some you know, weird thing. No, I'm, I'm serious. Like sharing your faith can become really simple and something you really look forward to doing. Amen? Okay, that's what I'm going to talk about. I'm excited to talk about this. Uh, let's read a, a story that is really a powerful one. Okay, it's from Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. And you've probably heard this story before. I'm going to read from NIV 84 today. Let's, let's rise together. Let's read this passage together. Here's what it says. Pay attention to what's going on in this story. Powerful, powerful story. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer. Now, the temple had three prayer services every day, okay? Uh, 9 a.m., noon, and 3 p.m. They were going to the 3 p.m. prayer service that day at 3 in the afternoon. Now, a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to bed from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked for them for money. And Peter looked straight at him, as did John. And Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. And Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Wow. And taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly... The man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging in the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Amen. Amen. Let's have a seat together. Wow. That's quite a story, isn't it? It's like any other day, any given day in this, in this man's life. He probably woke up that morning, got ready, you know, probably didn't have much. And whoever it was, whether it was his friends or his family or someone, would take him to the temple, the gate in front of the temple every day. And he would beg for money every single day. And it was like any other day when he would beg. But then he saw these two men, and they looked like everybody else. Except they weren't like everybody else. Because instead of just walking past him, like everyone else did, or just dropping a few coins and just walking away, because he probably smelled bad, and he didn't look very good, and they didn't want to be with him. Instead, Peter and John look at him. They look straight at him. And they ask him to look at them. And they actually make eye-to-eye -eye contact with this man. That probably maybe never happened in this life. And the amazing thing is, he's expecting them to
to give him money. Just that's why he's there. That's what he wants, right? But instead, they say something to him that day that rocked his world and literally changed his life forever. This is an amazing thing that just, that just happened in this man's life. They look at him and say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Just picture, like, if you were this man. Okay? Here you are just expecting some coins. And there is this guy who looks at you and says, walk. And what happened? Peter grabbed his hand, started helping him up. And scripture says, immediately his feet and ankles became strong. Now, guys, listen up. This guy said it was, he was crippled from birth. And later in the passage, we find out he was over 40 years old. He didn't walk his whole life. He was crippled. He was handicapped his whole life. He had never walked before. I mean, Emily, what she shared earlier was incredible. That was just right on. And, and the reason why I say that is because it just it reminds me of, of what reality was like for this guy. Right? I mean, we, we complain about all sorts of stuff. Right? We complain about having too much homework. <laughs> complain about having to wake up earlier than you'd like. Complain about having to eat, you know, Pan Express again or whatever. <laughs> complain about the weather. Hey, when's the last time you guys thank God that you could walk? Wow. <laughs> right? 40 years this guy didn't, he was not able to walk. And then he gets up. Actually, scripture says he jumped to his feet. He didn't just walk, he, he jumped to his feet. And he starts following Peter and John into the temple. And while they're walking to the temple, He's jumping and praising God. And people are going crazy. Because they've seen him literally every day at that gate. Which twice in the passage, the Holy Spirit led Luke to note the name of that gate, which was called what? Beautiful. Now, why would, why would he mention that? How ironic, right, that this, this crippled man doesn't look beautiful at all in the eyes of the world or anyone else except for God. He's, he's sitting there every day at a temple gate called Beautiful. And when he receives this healing, he's, it's revealed to him how beautiful he is in the eyes of the Father. Amazing thing that happened to this guy. So I know what you're thinking then, right? That, well, this is a great story. And this is something that we see in the Bible all the time. But something like this will never happen in my life. Right? Is that what some of you guys are thinking? Right? That's it's a great story, but you know, like I haven't seen something like that happen. Or I don't think I'm ever going to see something like that happen in your life. Okay, I'm going to raise your hand for you because I know some of you guys feel that way. Okay? And if you do, there's two very important things that God wants to tell us today. Very simple, but very, very important. Here's the first one. Something like this can happen in your life. Okay. Something like this can. One of my favorite passages in Scripture, I know I say that almost every week, and it's a different one, but really, <laughs> one of my favorites, really, it's like really up there, is Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. And here's what it says, okay? Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Here's, here's what it's saying. God's able to do anything. More than what you can even dare ask or imagine that he's able to do. God is able to do that. So you imagine the most crazy thing that God could do. God's able to do more than that. But here's what it says. According to his power that is at work 
within us. Did you guys see that? Yeah, God is awesome. God is crazy. He's able to do anything. We're all saying amen to that. But what does the passage say? He doesn't just do that for the sake of doing it. He wants to show that he's able to do anything according to his power at work within you. Did you guys hear that? According to his power at work within us. So, something like that can happen in your life. Let me give you an example from just this week in my life. So funny, last Sunday we our family was visiting uh, uh, Joel and Lisa's family and seeing baby Aurora. Beautiful baby, beautiful baby. And uh, in the course of that night, I was having a conversation with Joel. And Joel said something to me that really stuck out to me. He said, you know, he often hears that people say that praying for healing is difficult. Praying for healing for others is difficult. But he's like, it's not difficult. It's impossible. It's impossible. I said, oh, Joel, that's good. <laughs> 48 hours later, I'm at my, I'm at my office. And I overhear one of my coworkers talk about how he's having this really bad back pain. And it, it recurs, you know, like every once in a while. And it's so bad that he literally has to crawl to get out of bed. Like he can't walk. Like he has to crawl and get out of bed. Kind of like the crippled man, that's chapter 3, right? He like literally has to crawl to go, go to the bathroom. So I overhear this conversation having with another one of my coworkers. And later, you know, I'm like, hmm. I was just having this conversation. I'm having this conversation with God. God, I just had this conversation with Joel the other day about healing. I think this is something you want me to, uh, to look into today. <laughs> so I strike a conversation, struck up a conversation with my coworker, and I said, uh, you know, talk about work stuff. And I said, hey, by the way, I overheard that you said that you're, you're near your back spot in this book. What's going on? So he kind of shared about it, and he shared how bad it was. And it was pretty bad even that day. I could tell. He just did not look right, you know. Say, hey, would it trip you out if I prayed for you? He's like, no. I mean, like, right now. <laughs> no, please. You know, it's so funny, like, um, when, I ever, when I ask non-believers if I can pray for them, they almost always say yes. The people that say I'm good are usually the Christians. <laughs> Wait, can I pray for you now? <laughs> really? You're perfect right now? Right? Can I just pray for your discipleship? <laughs> really? You're good? It's non believers that are always like, oh yeah, pray for me. Right? So, okay. So I'm going to lay hands on your back. Is that okay? So I started praying for him. And it didn't occur to me at the time, I'm, I'm kind of putting myself out there right now. You know, because this is like work and this is just him and I. It doesn't work. Then it's like, okay. But anyway, uh, okay, God, do the impossible. So I'm praying for his back. And then I, I, I finish my prayer. I, and while I'm praying for him, I said, Jesus, reveal your love for him. Just, just completely heal his back right now in Jesus' name. And I, I get up, and then he said, thank you. And then I think he expected me to leave the office. <laughs> I said, well, hey, did you feel anything? He's like, oh. Uh, I actually felt kind of warm, but I don't know if I was just imagining something. So, okay, do you mind standing up? Dude, try it out, man. Test it out. <laughs> okay, so stood up. And then I was like, just take it easy, you know, but, but try it. Try bending down. She starts bending down. Goes all the way down, all the way back. All the way down, all the way back. Yeah. And I can see his, his head, his like, face is like, dude, this is crazy. <laughs> He's like, just like 10 minutes ago, I tried bending down in the hallway, and I couldn't bend down. I said, oh, good. God loves you. <laughs> That's why your back is all right. I said, try again. He's like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. He's like, dude, you just, you just got a miracle, man, in your life today because God loves you. Right? And then I said, is there any other pain? And he said, oh, there's a little bit of pain in, in his lower leg. Like, why not under his butt? I said, okay, bro. I'm not going to lay hands. I'm going to keep praying for you. And I prayed for him two more times. And uh, he said it was still a little bit. But I said, okay, it's okay. Just walk around. You'll be all right. <laughs> um, now, okay, for me.
me, I'm not a faith healer. Uh, I, 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 all I did was pray for him. All I did was pray for him. And that's really the second thing I think God wants us to know. The first thing is, you know what? God wants to do the impossible in your life. Yeah. Because the same Holy Spirit that was living in the apostles lives in you. Lives in you. But here's the second thing. And this is what I love about what Apostle Peter said in the passage. He said, I don't have money. Bro, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't have money. <laughs> but what I have, I'll give you. That phrase just, boom, like this whole week. What I have, I'll give you. You know what? When it comes to sharing your faith, we think, oh, I need to know apologetics, and I need to know all the Roman road, and I need to know uh, all these, you know, you know, scriptures, and I need to have a perfect answer to the skeptic's questions, and I need to have all this stuff. If you have that, great. But you don't need to have that. It's good to have it. It's good to pursue it. And you know our church, we love apologetics. I love apologetics. I, I love hearing the, the questions of skeptics and, and learning, trying, how can I address these questions? So I value those things tremendously. At the end of the day, though, all you can do and all God's asking you to do is just give what you have. If all you know is John 3.16, <laughs> then when God moves your heart to share that with somebody, tell them John 3.16. You don't have to know what it, all the theological stuff behind it, this and that, and the other thing. Just tell them John 3.16. Or if you don't even feel comfortable telling them John 3.16, just say, God loves you. <laughs> and if you're just even comfortable saying that, okay, that's, it's okay. Then show them God's love. Just give what you have. Give what you have. That's all God wants you to do. Just give what you have. If, if you can give someone your time to show them God's love, give what you have. If you can invite a friend over to hang out and you just want to bless them, you want to encourage them because you know they're going through stuff, even if you don't talk about the gospel, they see God's love in you. Give what you have. You know, if, if someone's hungry, you got food, give what you have. Sharing your faith is not about giving a gospel presentation. I believe sharing your faith is about showing people the heart of the Father. That's why evangelism is so simple. It's about showing people the heart of the Father. Okay? I've been through evangelistic training, through Billy Graham and, and everything. Like I went through all that stuff. And, and, they, and they teach you good stuff. And I'm glad I went to it. And the, well, the only thing, I'm sorry, the only thing I remember from that whole training <coughs> is that for some, I don't know how they found out about this, but they say that data shows that someone has to hear the gospel or see the gospel in some way seven times on average before they make a decision for Christ. Now again, how they came up with that, I have no idea. <laughs> so, but if that's true, which I believe it is, if that's what they're saying, <laughs> Billy Graham's reputable, you know Billy Graham, evangelistic ministries, right? Well, then maybe you showing someone God's love by just hugging them and encouraging them is maybe the first time they encounter the gospel. Or maybe it'll be the sixth time. Or maybe it'll be the seventh time. And you just do something so simple, you just give what you have. You just say, you know, I don't know why, but I feel like God just wants you to know He loves you. And boom! They're like weeping and just like all this, you know, they're sharing all this stuff and then maybe that's the seventh time. And then that's when you say, hey, just pray with me to invite Jesus in your heart. It's just about showing people the heart of the Father. And that's something all of you and I can do. Sometimes just praying for someone, that's what all you can give? Then give that. Just give what you have. You know, I was brushing my teeth last night just so tired, getting ready for bed, because I prepped so long for this message. <laughs> and, and wrote all this stuff down. This is an aside, by the way. And then this morning during our time of prayer, you know, I'm getting prayed for and, and, and saying, you know, spirit move and, and, and just whatever. Don't, don't even speak through Pastor Peter's notes. Just boom. Right? And I said, okay, fine. Let's put my notes away. Right? But I, I 
forgot why I talked about that. <laughs> oh yeah, revelation, right? Like the Holy Spirit. So I'm, I'm so tired last night after preparing all this stuff. Wow, I'm brushing my teeth. Boom. And so I'm saying boom so much. <laughs> boom. Get hit. While I'm brushing my teeth. Literally, this happened. Holy Spirit says to me, hey, why don't you look at it? Jesus' encounters with people individually versus his encounters with crowds. And see the difference. Whoa! Where did that come from? That's from God, right? So I'm like, oh! I totally woke up. So I go to the, after I brush my teeth, and I go to look at, look and start investigating this in the Word. And I realize something. Jesus proclaimed the gospel to crowds. But to individual people, he touched and rarely ever gave them a gospel presentation. Wow. Right? Thought about that? Have you just thought about that? There's only one person that he had a deep theological conversation with. That was with Nicodemus in John chapter 3. And the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4. <laughs> now that I think about it. But scripture actually says in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus' regular thing was to teach crowds, but he touched people. Right? So when you think, well, is it really sharing the gospel if I just show somebody God's love or do something small? Yeah, it is, because that's what Jesus did. And he's the greatest evangelist ever. Right? Just give what you have. That's what sharing your faith is all about. And as you give what you have, People really start to care more about why you're doing it. Really, really important for us to know that. Because when we think about evangelism, we think, oh, it's so scary to talk to people about God. And it's awkward to bring up Jesus in a workplace or at school. You know what? Yeah, it, it is hard. It's not the easiest thing to do to navigate that. But what can you do every day to share your faith? Show somebody. Just one person every day, the heart of the Father. And you will change lives. That's what sharing the gospel is all about. There will be a time where you have to tell people about Jesus. There will be a time where you need to know how to de defend the faith and how to declare the gospel. That's true. There will be situations where you need to do that. And you may run into situations where you share the heart of the Father and all you get is all these questions in return. That's okay. You don't have to answer all those questions. Just keep showing them the love of God. Keep showing them the love of God. And it will transform lives. Let's pray together.